After weeks of rising tensions due to increasing rebel fighting in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda and the DRC have now agreed to de-escalate tensions. The agreement reached at talks mediated in Angola entails an immediate end to hostilities, the revival of the Congo-Rwanda Commission and the retreat of M23 fighters from Congo. The aim is to normalize diplomatic relations as president of the two countries explained. We are looking forward to creating... We are looking forward to creating a normalization between our two countries by also resolving issues that are on the ground that have led us to this point. I really hope and expect this process to bring about an immediate ceasefire and the withdrawal of this M23 group, while obviously waiting for the roadmap that will lead to peace, stability and confidence. Now, the DRC earlier accused Rwanda of supporting the M23 rebels operating in the forest along the border between the two nations. Scores of civilians have been killed, and the flare-up of violence since April has displaced more than 160,000 people in the region. DW correspondent Mario Mula traveled to Goma in eastern Congo to meet some of those who fled the fighting. The sound of a bomb blast made Ramazani Aridi fear for his life. It exploded near his home in the village of Rohunda, eastern Congo. He knew instantly that the M23 rebels were coming. It was around 2 a.m. We were all afraid because it was not small bullets. They were bombs. We knew it was an attack, so everybody started fleeing. He got shot in the crossfire between the M23 rebels and the Congolese army. 650 families have found refuge at this school near Goma, not Kivu's capital. Conditions are deplorable. People sleep in classrooms, and they tell us there is no food or medical care. 160,000 people have been forced to flee since the clashes began in April. The M23 was pushed back by the Congolese army, backed by UN troops, and surrendered in 2013. But in November last year, it re-emerged. The militia group claims to protect the Tutsi minority in eastern Congo and accuses the government of failing to observe a previous peace deal. Kinshasa says the M23 rebels are backed by Rwanda, but Kigali denies the accusations. How do you explain the resurgence of M23? With big caliber weapons, with equipment which can destroy planes, is the M23 capable of buying missiles and long-range mortars? Ekenge claims Rwanda's goal is to occupy DRC's territory and exploit its mineral riches. Rwanda is among the biggest exporters of gold and coltan, but there is no grain of gold in Rwanda. They keep the insecurity in Congo in order to get the minerals for a cheap price or even for free. According to the U.S. Treasury, more than 90 percent of Congo's gold is smuggled to regional states, including Rwanda. It also says that the gold trade is a major driver of conflict. People in Goma are tired of violence. Since May, anti-Rwandan protests have been held regularly across the DRC. They are Tutsis from Rwanda. Their uniforms are Rwandan, their guns are Rwandan. They are shooting indiscriminately. Local activists in Goma feel let down by the international community. The international community doesn't say anything because they don't care about our insecurity. They don't care about our well-being. For them, it's only important who's the guardian of their geopolitical interests. A sentiment shared by residents in Goma. Our country is rich, but we don't benefit at all. We can't really say we are rich, as we don't see anything of it. We can't pass a year without hearing that somewhere around Goma, massacres or a war take place. Ramazani has had enough of war. He now only has one wish, 
and that is a safe home to return to. For more on this, I am now joined by Invemba Pezu Dizolele. He is Director, Africa Programme with the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Hello, Mvemba. Welcome to the program. Hello, now, we just saw in the report a young man that's hoping for the end of the ongoing conflict. But what is really behind the long-lasting tensions between the DRC and Rwanda? Eddie, thank you for having me. It's a, it's a long-lasting issue that actually goes back to the genocide in 1994 in Rwanda, where armed groups, uh, particularly the armed forces of Rwanda, are located in the RC, and that led to the collapse, if you will, the overthrow of the Mobutu regime, and eventually caused the split of Congo into three areas of influence. One influenced by Uganda, with the MLC and the Jean-Pierre Bemba, one influenced by Rwanda with the RCD, what they call Rassemblement Congolais pour la Démocratie. And then, of course, the third part was controlled by uh, the Kinshasa regime. After the peace process that took place in 2003, and armed groups, uh, foreign armed groups were supposed to leave the country, the RCD had transformed into a political branch, meaning a political party, did not do well in the election, and eventually some, the, some of the old element of the RCD created a rebel movement called the CNDP, mm. with a fellow named Laurent Kunda, if you remember that. Then the RCD in 2009 had collapsed and morphed into a political party. Laurent Kunda had been arrested or taken into Rwanda, where he's still under house arrest. And then some of the troops from the RCD, uh, from the CNDP, Became they were integrating the Congolese army and had a peace deal, the March 23 peace deal. That's where the name M23 today comes from. Okay. Some of those soldiers okay. then decided the peace process did not work for them, and they took up arms and became the M23. Can you tell us who exactly are they and what do they want? The M23 are soldiers who claim that they were not fully integrated in the Congolese army, and now they want to renegotiate that, uh, that deal and reintegrate the Congolese army. They also claim that they are uh, taking up arms to protect the Rwandan, Kinwa Rwanda speaking people in Eastern DRC. Well, unfortunately, um, innocent people are caught in the crossfire, so something must be done about the situation. But a day after the president of Congo and Rwanda agreed to de-escalate diplomatic tensions, the M23 attacked again. Uh, the, rebel, the rebel group says it is not bound by a ceasefire as no one negotiated with them. So what must be done to end the conflict? What must be done, AD, is a full comprehensive peace process between the DRC and Rwanda. There are a lot of grievances that have just been longstanding. We cannot have peace without a cost. Peace comes at a price, comes at a political price. In other words, leadership in both DRC and Rwanda have to explain to the people what they're trying to achieve and why, and get the legitimacy of the people behind this deal. B, it needs to bring to the fore all the grievances. In the case of DRC, they need an international tribunal. They, want, they need truth and reconciliation. In case of Rwanda and DRC, they need to bring to the fore all the grievances that Rwanda has, all the grievances that the DRC has, and then hammer those out in the way that Germany and France did in 1945, okay. in the way that any other country that has made peace has done in the past. Mvemba Pezo Dizolele, director of the Africa program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Thank you. You're welcome, Eddie.